there's only one way I would deal with this, and that is thunder and lightning. Probably the route of violence is the right way, kind of like violence against protesters. Or if there's another way, a peaceful way, that police could actually act to resolve and actually maintain peace in South Africa. There's only one way to intervene, and that is to intervene, but with a almighty force. And obviously, now the bear is actually going the you know, forceful way where he's going to involve, you know, the defense forces and, you know, all forms of force. I would bring in the military, I would bring in the police, law enforcement, anybody that can carry a bulletproof, license for a gun, I would bring them in, I would put a force of 5,000 people. I would take three months and I would wipe them out. So I believe in this video, Neil De Pere is actually giving a cryptic, low-key advice to the new Minister of Police, Senzo Mchunu, on how to crush protests, especially in light of the current protests that are actually going on now in Cape Town, in the area of Philippi, where residents are really protesting for some issues. I'll be making a research on that, but let's listen to how Neil De Pere actually proposes a way to crush protest and you know the rising violence in South Africa and I'll be back for some really interesting analysis on the protest that's actually being discussed at the moment in Cape Town where murders and shootings are actually going on. Well Neil, while there's this jockeying for positions uh, and entry into this government, uh, Cape Town has become a worse killing field than ever. How many people died in recent days? There's a war. Yes, because there is. We can now paint the zebra any color again that we want. This is coming back black and white. It is shocking the amount of gunfire, the amount of, of, of killing that has gone on in the past three days in the Western Cape. And you know the thing that I always say is there's a cliche, and I'm part of it, I stay here. It is a stunning city. It is probably a, a emerald or a diamond of the world. But in the back of it, Behind this facade, murder, mayhem, and gang violence has overtaken, and in my opinion, as I said to a commentator this morning, it's out of control. It's out of control because you can see the video footage coming on Twitter, on, on everywhere. It's bursting. Someone said to me, but Neil, what would you do about it? Wrong person, to be honest. To ask, because if you wanted me to go sort out this problem, like I kind of did a couple of years ago, then you must know there's only one way I would deal with this, and that is thunder and lightning. Axel donner weer afbring op hierdie kriminele. There's only one way to intervene, and that is to intervene, but with a almighty force. I would bring in the military. I would bring in the police, law enforcement, anybody that can carry a bulletproof, license for a gun. I would bring them in. I would put a force of 5,000 people into this situation and I would solidify it. I would take three months and I would wipe them out. Now, when you speak like that, people go, what about human rights? Listen for me. Human rights are hot. When you go and you are about to shoot one another and you kill a child and you kill an innocent person, I will take away your human right. Probably just lost 950,000 voters. I don't care. There's one way that you deal with a criminal, you deal with him. Now, this is where I must tell you, we will have to sort out this government because the longer we take to appoint a minister of police, a Minister of Defence, a Minister of Justice. That is as long it's going to take to see who they appoint so that those Vraftag know a lay contract. Chris, we must pull a line in the sand with this and it's going to take hard work, at times a cold heart, but as yet to make a little deal. And I'm sorry, it's not happening at the moment and I am going to do whatever I can, because remember, I'm on the outside at the moment, to influence the inside, but our children cannot continue dying on the streets like this. Sorry, you can see I'm a bit... 
That Bach made one. No, Neil, uh, Bach... I'm with you. Brilliant, brilliant. What do you guys think? Um, I know, I, I think I made a video recently on this channel on how, you know, an article that actually um, analyzed the way police uh, action could actually be managed in South Africa. And if probably the route of violence is the right way, kind of like violence against protesters or, you know, the murders in, in South Africa, the murderers or those who actually commit crimes, or if there's another way, a peaceful way that police could actually act to resolve and actually maintain peace in South Africa. And, and obviously, now the bear is actually going the, you know, forceful way where he's going to involve, you know, the defense forces and, you know, all forms of force to crush uh, violent crime and violence, you know, and this kind of um, irresponsible behavior by protesters in South Africa. Probably a lot of people have wondered if that would be the right approach, especially in a really sensitive state, a populace in South Africa, where there are factions of the populace that actually are striving for um, a pursuit for what many have termed a pursuit for elements of historical injustice in South Africa and, and the like. So it's really, inter it's really um, sensitive, like I've said, earlier on that uh, to be a police officer <clears throat> in South Africa and in this video I actually believe that you know this is kind of like a cryptic low-key uh, advice or strategy being leashed out to especially the new minister of police at the moment whose name is Edward Senso Chunu uh, you know who was actually sworn in recently around process cabinet as minister of police taking over from Minister Betty Selle who many of you especially in your comments I see have actually argued that you know was probably one of the worst ministers of police in South Africa um, at the time but anyway one of the things I find about uh, this new minister of police Senzo Mchunu is actually really interesting that you know he actually once served as the minister of water and sanitation and he actually also was once minister of public service and administration so probably I don't know if maybe he has some background in policing or you know um, you know the the, the art of policing as near the bear usually argues that a minister of police should be one that has gone through a police academy and police isn't just something that's given or placed on an individual but policing is an is, a, is, is an art in itself there's a there's a strategy there's an education behind the, the professional for being a police and a police minister should have passed through that profession so i wonder i don't know probably i'll do some research more on this uh, new minister of police edward senzo juno on you know his background in policing but i I know that you know from research here it actually has used that he was once minister of water and sanitation and he was also once minister of public service and administration and he actually also served as the premier of kwazulu natal from 22nd of august 2013 until the 23rd of may 2016 and he was also a former provincial chairman of the anc in kwazulu natal right and then you know so it's really tricky anyway how you know his approach to policing will be in south africa being the fact that he has actually served as um you know these ministers in water and sanitation in public service and administration so it's it's really tricky anyway but now the bear actually argues that you know his approach to really solving this uh, violence um, protests especially the ones that actually are held by irresponsible protesters would be by force and you know and you know, involving the South African Defense Forces and those who work with the troops and all that, really interesting. But anyway, that the, to enter into the context of the of the conf of the you know what um, in this interview was even termed as a war going on right now in Cape Town. Um, it's, it was really tricky for me to find what the whole protest was about. But I actually saw two articles that are actually interesting and give us some light. Uh, one is actually published uh, on 25th of June 2024, which speaks about how Cape Town's relocated railway occupiers are actually protesting over water, right? So it says that the R300 uh, was blocked for several hours in what the community says was a last resort to be heard by the government. So I think this is about, um, it argues that, you know, there were many, there were families in, in uh, you know, Cape Town that were relocated from Cape Town's central rail, railway line to a, a region called Philippa East. And actually, you know, we're protesting because there's lack of water, you know, as a result of that. Especially this um, R300 was blocked for several hours by these protesters. So it argues that the people who were relocated from Cape Town's Central Railway Line Reserve to Prasa Land at Stock Road, Philippi East, they blocked the R300 for several hours on Monday afternoon to demand water. It says that more than 100 protesters from what is now called Loiso Ukola Madambla village used bags of bags of rubbish and bricks to block the road. 
He argues that they were carrying a placard reading that we need water as a matter of urgency. And we know that, you know, the actual uh, vice president, uh, I don't remember his name now, but he actually spoke about how, you know, although most of South Africans are actually focusing on load shedding, that there's a water shedding crisis that's coming up. And if it's not tackled, it will be one of a major disaster. So this might not be one of the... Um, elements or reflections of that complaint you know that you know water in this area called um, uh, philippi philippi east uh, is, uh, is really lacking and it's really becoming a reason for massive protests in this region of cape town it argues that the protesters were carrying a placard saying that we need water as an emergency and that they also uh, argue that we are in the middle of nowhere and not even a single water tap right so um it also argues that the language is, some of the protests also argue that the language that the government knows is protest and a violent protest right so that's from some of the protesters in this region so it goes on to say that then there were 900 families that were relocated from the, the cape town central railway station to philippi east right um, and it was part of what was called an operation bekela which was a joint venture between prasa and the city and also the housing development agency hda and also the provincial and national governments to restore metro rail services now it says that when the families are arrived on the site in december it says that there was no water or sanitation infrastructure and also to date that there has not been stand pipes being installed you know and so it says that in march right this march like previous march uh, residents complained bitterly about the lack of water to the Parliament Standing Committee on Public Accounts when it conducted an oversight visit. Now, it says that the city has since said it has been delivering water severally, several times a day with 7,000 litre tankers and also three days a week as it delivers. But then the community leader actually argued that no water had been delivered for over a week and that they have been buying water or relying on the goodwill of the residents of Acacia and Hanks Park or going to other informal settlements that do not that do have communal taps. So most of these people have actually been taking a long walk, walk long walks to other informal settlements to get water. So it says that the city previously stated that it had not installed bulk service infrastructure because the land was not zoned for residential purposes not for not rezoning the land prior to the families uh, moving there the city has fined prasa for 25,000 rand right now it argues that um, a south african police force uh, official colonel andre trot actually said that the crowd dispersed when the police order service arrived at the scene and that no further action was required now it also says that no case was opened and no one was arrested when the police tried to intervene in this uh, riot or protest it also argues that you know the mako member for water and sanitation councillor zahid badrudian actually said that the last water delivery took place on 18th of june right and that additional water delivery unfortunately did not take place last week due to operational limitations at the time and probably this is the reason why because you see this actually fell in the period when ramaphosa was actually negotiating for you know the whole thing of the parliament uh, cabinet so it felt like this uh, uh, protest erupted as a result of probably something that had to do with the um, uh, announcement of negotiations for the government of national unity and all but anyway I also found uh, um, also another article that actually argues about this protest in this region of Philippi, but this is now before uh, the elections actually. So it actually argues that protesters were burning tires and they were blocking roads and they used stone cars and set a bus alight. And that the, the car in which the independent candidate Zaki Achmat was driving was also shot at at this region. So it says that black smokes. Uh, black smoke hung over Philippi on that evening as young people, many wearing uh, balaclavas or masks, blocked major roads with burning tires and rocks uh, on the eve of the election. So this uh, this protest now in this region of Philippi actually actually happened also on the eve of the elections in 29 of May uh, in South Africa. You see, so this has been actually a buzzing uh, protest. Uh, probably a buzzing issue of water crisis that actually brewed in Philippines, and hopefully the government of national unity would address that. But it actually argues that there were traffic lights at the corner of Sheffield Road and New Elsie Ben. Uh, they were alight, right? And so motorists had to find alternative routes. And also that as at nearby Vietnam Road, cars were cars that were passing were stoned, and the atmosphere was tense. And small spaza shops, meat sellers, and vegetable stores 
close their doors fearing looting. And also earlier in the day, a golden arrow bus was set alight near the bus depot, and it was clear what the it was not clear what the protesters were about. So prior to the elections on May 29, it says that the, the protesters it was really, really clear what uh, you know um, their protest was about. But anyway, it argues that last November, angry residents disrupted the registration process for the elections, chasing away independent electoral co commission staff, and that this year's this year community leader and police assured the residents that there will be no disruption. It also argues that on one of those Tuesday evenings, ground up smoke to two community leaders on condition of um, anonymity as they were afraid of intimidation. Um, yeah, so so ground up is actually kind of like the the media the media guys who actually spoke to some of the people involved in this project to really understand what was going on. So uh, it argues that some of the people who were interviewed they argues that what what was going on was actually a destruction of property and roads and the threatening of innocent people and motorists going about their lives and that it was all political trying to sabotage the elections. And it also says that it's the, the same people who would also complain that their roads need to be fixed, but then they themselves have been destroying them, said one of the community leaders in this region. So it actually appears that this particular protest before the election of May 29 was one of um, ir irresponsible political, you know, uh, fracas in a way where they try to protest the elections. I don't know for what reason anyway, but um, it actually also argues that on Tuesday afternoon that there was an attempted hijacking of a car that the independent candidate Zaki Achmat was in and he and his members uh, of his team were actually driving through Philippi to campaign for the election and when at least two men attempted to hijack their car and one of the man fi men fired at the car lodging the bullet hole. It's really tricky, really um, strange how people are full, full of anger in South Africa and, and you know for unclear reasons really attempt to really hijack people's cars and you know guns guns all over the place shootings and all that's really scary uh, this region of Philippa anyway but it argues that Achmat and his team escaped and no one was hurt and Achmat said he did not think he was personally targeted another community leader of this Philippa said that the acts of violence should be con condemned and that people doing it were all known and you know and that they're all being afraid that you know that they're all being afraid of being identified and that if we were all truthful and really wanted peace in our community we would hold them accountable so it argues that the people of Philippa are really tired of this whole um protests and violence going on in the region and that has become an area hot zone in Cape Town now where uh, Neil De Bay is now actually arguing that you know if he, he were police officer if he were police minister he would deploy the South African Defense Force and all that because these guys are actually you know in possession of guns and probably no one knows how uh, the magnitude of the guns they have and how much impact they, that would have on innocent people around and so um, it's it's a call for action. Uh, you know, it's also really interesting. I found a really interesting opinion poll of this regard um, from uh, uh, one Cindy Leva Baza who speaks, who spoke about you know one of the priorities of the GNU and roping in this whole problem with the water crisis in Philippi, arguing and explaining in you know his own opinion poll what should actually go on, uh, what the GNU should prioritize in his personal experience in driving through this area. So he argues that, you know, on his way to, uh, you know, where he actually um, called the uh, Sapat Palace in Lansdowne, Cape Town, uh, he booked an, uh, a, 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 a Gatsby from a restaurant via Uber Eats. And that, you know, about 40 minutes, the driver messaged to ask whether he lived in Lotus River and that if he did, he would have to cancel his order because there were gangsters shooting at each other, you know. So he actually argued that he assured the driver that the suburb where he is in uh, is nowhere near Lotus River. However, when he arrived to deliver, um, you know, you know, his Gatsby, uh, okay, I think this was a, a, a delivery agent who was supposed to deliver food or something ordered from Uber Eats to this guy. But when the guy actually tried to approach, uh, you know, this region of Lotus River, he actually was as afraid because they were gangsters shooting each other. But it says that whenever, when, when the guy came to deliver his Gatsby, he was still fearful of going back home to Bumuletu as his scooter, uh, on his scooter because of the violent crime going on there. 
He spoke about how gangs of youth actually wait patiently to extort, extort from and rob hardworking people where he lives. He actually, actually also argues that there were even stories from social workers who had been warned not to go into parts of Philippi, the same Philippi we're talking about now, uh, because of the, how unsafe and violent Philippi has become. One social worker described it as a powder keg, just mere minutes from affluent suburbs. A whole class of urban terrorists is being created by the lack of order and the lack of interventional services, and social workers are too scared to do remedial work with traumatized people, especially children. And you know, prison man, prisoners also released back into the poor communities after receiving eleven thousand rand a month. Uh, you know, so um, it actually argues that you know it's 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 an after an education in psychopathy, extreme violence, and rape in prison, an education they would use to terrorize, rape, mutilate, and murder women and children. So you know, it argues that someone, according to this opinion poll, is arguing that. Some of the violence taking place in Philippa is actually being uh, conducted by prisoners released back into the poor communities around the region. And actually, after they've had an education in psychopathy, in extreme violence, and rape in prison, well, whatever what they've actually learned in prison, they try to come to implement it to formulate new forms of crimes and then you know put the whole region in, in danger anymore. So once more, so uh, this opinion poll is actually pushing that government communities should take note of this. So actually saying that this is simply to say that for all the jostling in the government of national unity propositions, perhaps the greatest utility of the government of national unity would be to counterweight, would be as a counterweight to the extractive political and economic institutions that the AMC has set up and subsequent erosion of state capability that has come, uh, you know, with those networks. So according to him anyway, he's arguing that uh, Dr. Peter Grunwald of Freedom From Plus might need to uh, you know, initiate some prison reforms that break the power of gangs in prison. And also, in addition, together with the new police minister, Sense of Juno, uh, the government must break the power of gangs outside of prison while building a police force capable of restoring law and order, preferably by decentralizing the police services. So, it's really interesting. I remember in one of my last videos, anyway, I made a video where uh, Gaten McKenzie actually speaks about how he's most equipped to stop the violent gangs in in South Africa. Now, you know, I think uh, with Dr. Peter Gren Grenwald, P Peter Grenwald and uh, Senzo Chunu, uh, probably forming a, an alliance, you know, in this regard, probably prison reform and and also um, a kind of like a reform of the prison sector in South Africa that aims to uh, weaken the violent gangs in South Africa might be key. One wonders whether Dr. Peter Gren Grenwald might be capable for that or probably the um, Senzo Juno, because I don't know if probably any of them have backgrounds in uh, policing and policing at Nelly, they usually argue that a police minister must have gone through police academy and understood and studied policing. Uh, but I don't know if both of them actually have the skills it takes. But Peter Grunwald actually seems to be much more of a resilient leader as he has actually, you know, um, worked hard to get the freedom from process. Uh, um, you know popularity where it is today and actually i remember once he argued that one of the in one of the areas um of the townships in south africa most of the uh, supporters of the freedom from plot are blacks so he has actually worked hard to diversify the freedom from plot it's supported the supporter base and try to show itself as a, a party for the people really in south africa but whether he's capable and you know in terms of this whole prison reforms and working with the police together with Senzo juno to form a much more for the formidable police um department in south africa to help curb the crimes to help curb uh, you know the violence in south africa to help reduce the crime rate in south africa moderate in south africa to the point where south africa has, has been termed the mother capital of the world one is really one really wonders if how those two can function but we'll keep watching we'll keep studying uh and, and really understanding how they can function in their new positions very fully well that i don't know if both of them have extensive backgrounds in the area of policing and counteracting uh, violent crime but anyway we'll keep studying we'll keep watching what do you guys think about this video research uh, near the bear speeches share your thoughts in the comments